the, uh, the gantry arms around the Soyuz spacecraft uh, and the booster have spread. The vehicle is now on autonomous power. At the launch site in the Central Asian desert, NASA officials are on hand to watch the beginning of the journey for Laurel O'Hara, Ali Kononenko, and Nikolai Chub. Leading the NASA delegation today is NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Spaceflight, Ken Bowersox, ISS Program Manager, Joel Montalbano, Johnson Space Center Deputy Director, Steve Kerner, Norm Knight, Johnson's Director of Flight Operations, and the Chief Astronaut for NASA, Joe Acaba. And with them is NASA Public Affairs Officer Leah Cheshire, who filed this report a short time ago. Hi, Rob. We're here at the launch viewing site at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in the Kazakh Desert. We are surrounded by miles of sandy soil and brush with our focus on Soyuz MS-24 perched on Pad 31, just about two miles away from us. Now, this evening, we're in the low 60-degree Fahrenheit range. That continues to drop but we're looking up to clear skies for our crew tonight. Now, in contrast, the NASA delegation on the Earth Cosmos Charter received a very windy welcome when we arrived in Baikonur on Monday, and we saw a very chilly but by-the-book rocket rollout on Tuesday at 7.30 a.m. local time. And since we've been here, we've also seen many of the residents who called this desert home, including camels, cows, and horses. The crew's rigorous training has led to this moment, and they are ready inside the capsule, with this being the first space flight for Laurel O'Hara and Nikolai Chub, and the fifth for Oleg Kononenko. O'Hara's family is here cheering for her for her maiden voyage, and of course, so are we. Now we're looking forward to liftoff and seeing Soyuz rise on the skyline and light up the night. And with that, I'll send it back to you, Rob. Thank you, Leah. The countdown uh, is approaching the T-minus 15-minute mark. Everything is in great shape. The vehicle fully fueled. It is on autonomous power at this hour. You're going to be hearing a, a number of rapid-fire activities over the course of the next few minutes. The uh, one-minute uh, to command key to start uh, is scheduled at the T-minus 8-minute mark. Preparations will be transitioning to an automated mode, which is equivalent to a ground launch sequencer at the T-minus seven-minute mark. Again, you're hearing music piped uh, up to the crew aboard uh, the Soyuz spacecraft. And ascent on the right. The formats have been selected. Copy. It's a little bit difficult to perceive, but uh, buttressed up against the side of the Soyuz 2.1A rocket uh, are two uh, umbilical towers that have provided uh, all of the uh, consumables uh, for the spacecraft uh, throughout the course of the countdown preparations. The first of those two umbilicals will re retract at about the T-minus 31 second mark. The second of the two umbilicals you'll see uh, when we get there uh, will retract at about the T-minus 12 second mark or so. That will initiate the engine sequence start. The engines will come up uh, to full thrust and then uh, There'll be full ignition of the spacecraft's first stage engines, and the hold down posts will be uh, retracted, and the Soyuz rocket will be on its way. Again, it's about an eight minute, 45 second ride to orbit uh, for third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. The solar arrays and navigational antennas will deploy. The Soyuz will be about 1145 miles behind the International Space Station and will begin the automated rendezvous sequence uh, just a few minutes after uh, reaching its preliminary orbit with a uh, delta velocity burn just 39 minutes after launch. That will uh, raise uh, the orbit of the Soyuz and uh, fine tune its path to the station, initiating those uh, automated rendezvous operations. Because this is a fast track two orbit rendezvous for the Soyuz, uh, there won't be as many rendezvous burns required because the Soyuz will be uh, moving into the exact plane of the station's orbit, the corridor, 
you can liken it uh, to a car uh, moving on uh, from an exit ramp uh, to a freeway and getting into the right lane uh, to provide the shortest distance between uh, itself and its destination. Again, uh, the launch is precisely timed uh, for the moment when the Earth's rotation will place the Baikonur Cosmodrome in the plane of the orbit of the International Space Station. On board uh, the station itself, uh, the Expedition 69 crew, led by uh, Commander Sergei Prokopiev, the multinational crew that's on board the station, will be eagerly awaiting the arrival of their new crewmates later today with docking scheduled at 1.56 p.m. Central Time. Uh, assuming uh, everything goes as planned, the hatches are scheduled to be opened around 4.30 p.m. Central Time this afternoon to allow O'Hara, Kononenko, and Chub to enter their home, which for Kononenko and Chub will be about a year's worth of uh, stay on board the station. Laurel O'Hara will uh, be spending six months on the international outpost. Here in uh, Mission Control in Houston, uh, Flight Director uh, Chris Dobbins uh, polled uh, his team of flight controllers a short time ago. Everything is in readiness uh, for uh, the launch of Soyuz. Uh, from a station perspective, uh, you can see uh, 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 Dobbins is in the middle of this trio of flight controllers that you see. To his left is Flight Director Ronak Dave, and to Dobbins' right is veteran astronaut Jessica Mir. Antares, this is uh, five three. Lunch minus five minutes. Close helmet visors. Copy closing helmet visors. The interpreter talking to Soyuz Commander Oleg Kononenko in the descent module of the Soyuz MS twenty four spacecraft as we are now inside 10 minutes until launch. Inaudible. Copy, KSS is ready. We see Antares 3 on camera 2. Copy. When I walk beside her, I am a better man. This is uh, traditional uh, for the uh, technicians at the blockhouse in Baikonur to uplink uh, music of their choice to the crew members in the final hour before a countdown. It's basically a method of relaxing the crew members and making them feel at home before they begin their journey into space. For a, a quick look at the milestones en route to orbit, uh, first stage separation is expected at the one minute 58 second mark into the flight, followed uh, at two minutes and 34 seconds by the jettisoning of the launch shroud that envelops uh, the uh, Soyuz capsule itself. Second stage shutdown is scheduled at four minutes, 37 seconds after launch, followed 11 seconds later by second stage separation. The third stage lower skirt jettisoning is at the four minute, 56 second mark. And third stage shutdown is at eight minutes, 46 seconds. That is the new computation for that, followed just three seconds later by third stage separation. Seconds after that, the solar arrays and navigational antennas will uh, begin to be deployed and uh, the Soyuz spacecraft uh, will begin uh, in earnest its chase to catch up to the International Space Station. T minus seven minutes, 40 seconds until launch. We're about to have uh, an engineer at the blockhouse in Baikonur turn a key that transitions the countdown to an automatic mode, Antares, basically a ground launch sequencer for the remainder L of the countdown. Minutes, uh, 
Aftermath algorithms are on board, we will be broadcasting all the launch sequences to the engine. Copy, vehicle is nominal, we are ready to proceed. Copy. Antares, we are seeing you on camera one. Copy. Alec Kononenko, the Soyuz commander, reporting uh, that the vehicle is ready for launch, the crew ready for launch, as we are at the T minus six hour, 35 minute, six minute, 35 second mark in the countdown. Again, at the time of launch, the International Space Station will be over southwestern Kazakhstan at an altitude of 262 statute miles and will pass directly over the Cosmodrome and the launch site 23 seconds after liftoff. Now a view of the crew inside uh, the MS-24. At the top of your screen, Nikolai Chub, board engineer number one. There's Oleg Kononenko at the bottom of your screen, about to embark on the fifth flight of his career. Countdown has gone by the book. The vehicle was fueled several hours ago. The crew boarded the vehicle at the T-minus two hour, 45 minute mark, and now is poised to lift off just five minutes from now. Ground telemetry active. Strip chart recorders and ground telemetry now activated. Nitrogen purge. The fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines now being purged with nitrogen to fireproof them by removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer. Inside four minutes until liftoff. We're about a minute or so away from uh, the pressurization of the fuel and oxidizer tanks to optimize fuel flow and provide additional structural rigidity to the launch vehicle out on pad six, site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. We have now hit the T minus three and a half minute mark until launch. T minus three minutes and counting. All systems are go. The range is clear at Baikonur. The uh, key to drainage has uh, been conducted. This uh, key to drainage uh, enables the valves through which evaporated oxygen escapes from the fuel tanks into the atmosphere are closed beginning uh, basically a drain back of fuel back into the tanks and the valves providing liquid oxygen to replenish any lost by a boil off in the final minutes of the countdown. Tank repress in progress. Tank pressurization underway. 
T-minus two minutes and counting. The uh, ground propellant feed now has been terminated to the vehicle. The Soyuz on internal power. Coming up on T minus one minute. The first umbilical tower again will retract at the T minus 35 T -minus second mark. Vehicle on internal power. There goes the first umbilical retraction. The second umbilical will retract in just a few seconds to initiate engine start sequence. T minus 20 seconds. We have engine sequence start. We have engine ignition. Second tower separation. Three. Two, one. Bombs at flight speed. And lift off. O'Hara, Kononyenko, and Chu begin a short duration journey for a long duration mission on the International Space Station. All vehicle parameters are normal. 23 seconds into the flight. Good roll pitch in your program. Engine performance on the first stage nominal. L plus 30 seconds. Flight is nominal. 40 seconds into the flight. Structural parameters are normal. Engine parameters reported from the blockhouse in Baikonur all to be within limits and normal. One minute, five seconds, seconds into the flight. For all PCR nominal. All okay. the uh, vehicle parameters are normal. Good reports coming in from the blockhouse in Baikonur. The vehicle arcing out to the northeast from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Ninety seconds into the flight. L plus 90 seconds. First Good engine stage, performance engine being reported. 184608. See off nominal pressure in case of 1500. Copy. Coming up on uh, first stage shutdown. And we have first stage separation. Launch tower jettison reported. Everything in good shape. First stage separation. Two minutes, confirmed. 12 seconds into the flight. Kishore is back to nominal 980. Copy. The vehicle now uh, operating on its second stage engines. All parameters are normal. Good structural uh, performance by the vehicle. Launch shroud jettison now reported. 
And this view now from a camera on the upper stage of the Soyuz 2.1A booster. Two minutes, 50 seconds into the flight. A little over uh, six minutes of powered flight remaining. Launch vehicle is nominal. Copy. Soyuz is nominal. The crew is feeling well. Koninenko reports the crew is feeling well. Three minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. Perfect engine performance reported. Good structural parameters on the vehicle. L plus 200 seconds, second stage engine operating nominally. Second stage engine is functioning by the book. The Soyuz heading for its precise keyhole in space. Flight is normal. Now four minutes into the flight, everything going perfectly. Hara Kononenko and Shub heading for their preliminary orbit and the chase to track down and dock to the International Space Station. Four minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Roll pitch, all normal. Engine performance is normal as well. L plus 270 seconds, standing by for Gekka to command. Copy. Coming up on second stage shutdown. And we have second stage shutdown. Second stage separation confirmed. Copy, Second stage command. separation confirmed. Copy. That's the skirt for the third stage you saw being jettisoned. Five minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, about three and a half minutes of powered flight remaining. The Soyuz now being propelled on the power of its third stage engine. Copy. Soyuz is nominal, crew is feeling well. Copy. Kononenko continuing to report uh, that the crew is feeling well. Everything normal on board. Five minutes, 45 seconds into the flight. Good third stage performance. L plus 350 seconds. Flight is nominal. Copy. We've just passed the six minute mark into the flight. Good reports continuing to come in. Control of uh, the Soyuz spacecraft after it separates from the third stage will transfer to the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. Six minutes, 25 seconds into the flight. Stage three engine operating nominally. Six minutes, 45 seconds into the flight, two minutes of powered flight remaining. Stabilization is steady. Copy. Good stable structural performance by the vehicle. L plus 430 seconds. Stage three engine operating nominally. Seven minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Nothing but good reports coming in. We're about a minute and a half away from a third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation.
460. L plus 460 seconds. Launch vehicle structural parameters are nominal. Seven minutes, 55 seconds into the flight. Everything is going perfectly so far. Less than a minute to go before third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. L plus 490 seconds. Stabilization is steady. Eight minutes, 20 seconds into the flight, about 30 seconds of powered flight remaining. L plus 500 seconds. Flight is nominal. Right after third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation, we'll be standing by for the deployment of the solar arrays and navigational antennas on the Soyuz. L plus 520 seconds. Standing by now for third stage shutdown. Standing by for GK3. And we have third stage shutdown and third stage third separation. Stage engine cutoff confirmed. Separation confirmed. And that is, we're handing you over to MCC Moscow. And uh, the program uh, has been activated and the solar arrays and navigational antennas are now confirmed to have been deployed. Perfect ride to orbit for Laurel O'Hara, Ali Kononenko and Nikolai Chub. Antares, Moscow. Antares, Moscow. The Soyuz uh, being inserted into a perfect preliminary orbit and as it begins possible. its chase to catch up to and dock to the International Space Station later this afternoon. At the time of third Moscow, stage shutdown, the Soyuz Pocket. trailed the station by about 1,145 statute miles. Ascent. Execute for page 35. Copy. Uh, RTU closed, SP-1 and 2 are open, uh, checking SP. Copy. Start AKG uh, compartment check algorithm. Copy. Ready to start. Compartment check algorithm started. Copy. Copy per page 36. Aboard uh, the Soyuz MS-24, which carries the call sign of Antares, Ali Kononenko, Nikolai Chub, and Laurel O'Hara are beginning uh, systems checks as they uh, prepare for the first of their rendezvous burns, the DV-1 or Delta Velocity-1 burn that is scheduled Moscow. About 28 the minutes from now. Measurement one at 1855. Pressure in SR 806. Pressure in orbital module 721. Implementation compartment 885. Copy next measurement in five minutes. Copy. OSK. Uh, started course two. This view now from uh, the control panel inside uh, the Soyuz MS-24. Ali Kononenko reporting that the crew is feeling great following its on-time launch and its uneventful ascent into its preliminary orbit. Long test started. Copy. Moscow, I am ready to report for page 37 for screen 03, parameters to 14, 17.1, 17.1, 1.8, 1.6.8, 1.9, 2.6.7, 2.0, 1.4, 2.1, 2.2, 3.3.1, 2.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.3.
Propellant. The uh, crew on board uh, the Soyuz spacecraft uh, providing uh, systems uh, parameters and uh, systems information to the uh, Russian flight controllers that you see there in this uh, balcony view from a camera inside uh, the Russian Mission Control Center in the town of Koryov outside of Moscow. Over the course of uh, the next hour or so, uh, the crew will be testing uh, its CORE's automated rendezvous system. That's uh, the system uh, that will hey guys, automatically guide the Soyuz uh, through all of the docking parameters and uh, providing uh, the range between itself and the International Space Station and the rate of closure. Everything is going well. All systems have deployed. Per the book, no. Uh, reports on any deviations, so things are going well, and I wish you all the best. Thank you, Vladimir Alexeyevich. Once again, uh, the Soyuz lifted off on time after a flawless countdown at uh, 10.44 and 35 seconds a.m. Central Time, 11.44 a.m. Eastern Time, 8.44 p.m. at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. All of the uh, ascent events ticked off in perfect shape through uh, the activation of uh, all of the engines. The, all three stages of the Soyuz performed as advertised, uh, depositing the Soyuz into a perfect preliminary orbit from which now they uh, will begin uh, the short two-orbit, three-hour rendezvous to reach the International Space Station and a docking with the Rosviet module of the complex at 1.56 p.m. Central Time this afternoon. There's no calm. FCC Moscow ISS on Paris 2. Go ahead. Pressure in the S805 Delta negative 1. Bio pressure 821 Delta is negative 1. Pressure in the assembly compartment 8. Uh, uh, 104 and Delta negative 1. We are on stage four. I cannot currently monitor the attitude. Copy. Antares, we have some information for you. The um, propellant parameter is not, it says 216 and it's not accurate. We have 816. We confirm it is not quite accurate. Okay, copy. This is Mission Control Houston. As uh, the uh, Soyuz MS-24 crew, led by uh, Soyuz Commander Oleg Kononenko, who now is in his fifth flight into space, along with his first-time flyer crewmates, Nikolai Chub of Roscosmos and NASA's Laurel O'Hara, as they continue uh, to check out uh, spacecraft systems in the early minutes of their ride uh, into space, having launched just about 17 minutes ago from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. The uh, Soyuz spacecraft is in excellent shape. All of its solar arrays and uh, navigational antennas having been deployed as planned right after third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. So with that, uh, the beginning of automated rendezvous operations will begin in about uh, 30 minutes or so. A series of rendezvous burns that will carry uh, the Soyuz over the next two orbits into the neighborhood of the International Space Station where it will close the gap slowly but surely, do a fly around of the station to align itself to the Rosviet module of the International Space Station and to docking at 1.56 p.m. Central Time this afternoon. 
For that, uh, we will be back on the air at 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern time with rendezvous and docking coverage as the next trio of residents for the International Space Station uh, begins its trek to the complex and arrival at the International Space Station later today. So we'll be back with you in just a few hours for rendezvous and docking. In the meantime, we'll wrap it up for now. This is Mission Control Houston. <laughs>